Hello everyone, um, I'm Earl145. This is my channel to be named for skill modeling stuff. Um, so, disclaimer, I've been modeling for about a year or so and never made a video because it sucked. So I figured I would make a channel so other people that suck can see people that are bad and be like, hey, I'm normal. And then be happy because on Facebook and things like that, you always see really awesome builds everywhere and sometimes you're just like man do they ever mess up like come on um so today i just uh, decided to go with the bondi titan receptor in the 70 second scale should be a fast build um so let's see what's in here all these paper blocks it's a plastic part of how the whole thing works and screws and whatnot um, I bet Bondi kits in the past have always been really good to me, so hopefully this one goes the same way. So we have the directions in living color. And we've got a couple of sprues, um, yeah, I guess they've got water stuff decals and normal decals, yeah. Um, uh, that's kind of it. And it's kind of two colors, a gray and a black, and then the goofy green that Bondi seems to put out with their kits uh, that make it look like the little spaceships going shooty shooty pew pew. Uh, I think it's stupid, so I usually just throw these away and leave them in the box, you know. In case there's something to do with a bright green deal in the future. So we got the paneling for the, uh, I guess it's heat sinks, is that what it is? On uh, the interceptor, maybe? No? Sure, I'm sure someone will correct me in the comments. Uh, there's that side of the main, like, wing spar deals. Uh, I got some more stuff going on here. Let's see what we got. Uh, we got the, these are the stick on decals, put that right in the box. Uh, clear parts. Bondi is always pretty good about giving you clear parts that you can tape off versus like uh, ones that aren't. Thank you. I do not use words, I swear. I'll probably get better at this as I go. Anyways, um, more stuff for the uh, fuselage. And yeah, so it looks pretty good. And then the other part of that uh, is here. It's kind of goofy. Remember not to cut that off, because I'll probably screw up everything if I do. It happens to me a lot. Just like, oh yeah, we cut all this stuff off. It'll be fine. And then like, like, oh, that was actually a major piece that was structurally needed. Great. And then the model is lost. Anyway. Or like when I make armor, I just throw some mud on it, and hopefully nobody knows it. They usually know this because I tell them, I'm like, hey, yeah, this is where I screwed up. It's fun. Uh, so we have the base for uh, the thing. They always include these, I guess. You can build it pretty quickly and just kind of have a, like a pivot point to put stuff on the head. Yeah. Here's one I made for uh, an A Wing I did a while back. And you can see actuate the little deal and like make it be like in a turn and then that one was super special and came with the star destroyer turret uh kind of whatever not that impressive to me because i really don't care about them i ever play like x-wing the miniature series or whatnot um that turret could be a cool prop depending on what kind of scenario you're running um if you're not doing purely tournament play uh, which I dab, I dab it in that uh, way a long time ago when I was ultra nerd, now I'm just like mostly nerd. So, I don't know, let's see what we got. Uh, I guess the instructions start here. Take a dude who looks like pilot and cut him out. Uh, universe that I don't like putting pilot figures and stuff, and this will be no exception. So... To find these sprues. Thankfully, these sprues are labeled pretty well. I uh, had done a uh, Zvezda 12700 scale Star Destroyer, 
And while it was a really great kit, I liked it. None of the sprues were labeled with like the letters of what they were. You had to go back and reference a thing to figure it out. It took forever. I'm bad at reading, and it was just a pain. And I do realize I probably could have like tagged him with something after the fact. I was like, hey, that would have been really easy to do. But I obviously uh, was not thinking on a higher level at that point in time. Uh, so all I'm doing now is just kind of cleaning up the little pilot attach point. Uh, I'll end up sending that here in a minute. And then that's what he goes to. And then there's a big base thing. Big two, right here, 15, yeah. So we'll say the way that they have these sprues labeled, instead of like being only an alpha sprue or something, it'll be like an alpha one or alpha two kind of sprue. So watch out for that so you don't cut off the wrong part, but you should like a step anyways. Make sure you're doing the right thing. I mean, you don't want to waste money on models. Well, or you could. I mean, today, I was watching lots of videos of dudes like setting their models on fire and stuff because why not? did hurt my soul a little bit, but hey man, it's their stuff and do what they want. So, sand this off a little bit. I'll spend a lot of time on this, try to make it perfect, and then I'll never, ever, ever look at it again. I can't tell you how many times I've done interiors and stuff, and it's just like, this will look great. And, you know, everybody's going to see how the rudder pedals look inside the cockpit. Yeah, no. So, all right, let's see, this thing is right here. Two things are the front. The seat goes in like this, I believe. Hello, it works. And in true Bondi fashion, everything just kind of snaps together. So we'll put a little bit of tet on there just to secure it. Uh, yeah, it's a little bit of capillary action on the side. And really, I think that should be enough. I'll do a little bit on the other, just for consistency. And we will call that one done. And the next thing, he's got an instrument panel he needs, which will be rear facing, so there's really no big reason to do a lot of stuff. 214. I said reading. Reading is hard. So, if, uh, I said earlier I wanted to make at least a couple modeling videos just because it seems like all the cool kids are doing it. And I didn't really know what to use. And it turns out my dad bought me a GoPro a while back, a Hero Plus, I believe. So that's why you kind of have the fisheye effect of what I'm working on here. Uh, and it's due to using that GoPro. However, it's got this super duper cool app. This is like space age stuff, right? So you know, like get your phone or your tablet and you can Wi-Fi connect like to the camera. And then you can run the camera and the settings off of your tablet. So this is like a picture of a picture of a picture of what I'm recording right now, and I can have it off screen or whatnot, right? Uh, okay, I don't know what that was about. Uh, I don't know if y'all heard a loud beep, but I did. It kind of freaked me out. Uh, you can control everything on the camera through your tablet, so it's like, man, it's a baller. That's what I want. Uh, let's see a little bit of this. Just got a new pot of uh, Tet, and so try not to spill all of it the first day I've been using it, because that would be very sad. I would probably cry a lot. And I get really, really mad because the model store's closed. <laughs> I would be like, give me one. Alright, I guess these are like the yoga control stick or something. Kind of small. Uh, yeah, I, think, I can't remember exactly how the sprues flew this stuff. I thought they were more F-16, like on the sides kind of stuff. But this looks, uh, it don't look bad. Yeah, I'll take the 
this row. And so just do that. Okay. And we'll do, yeah, even the interior detail on this, there isn't any. It all is forward looking, so. Put a little bit of glue in there. Okay, maybe a little bit more. That should work. And that is a uh, ooh, pretty nice little thing we got there. So, sweet. So I'll set off to the side and see what is up next. Next thing is major assembly, of course. So, this is not painted yet. Uh, did not think that far ahead. So, I will take the hit on that one. Also, I think there's stuff that needs decals on the inside. And I'm off to a great start. This is going to be just the best build video ever. Uh, well then, I will use the sticker stickers because honestly, I don't think anybody will see the back of this. And I also kind of want to get this uh, build finished quickly to turn it into a sci fi build thing, which I forgot to take screw shots of. Damn. Uh, should be fun. There's those. And here we go. There's the back piece that this little barrel goes into. So we got a few little things here to sand. A little bit. So, if anybody actually watches this video and knows things about like cameras or DSLRs or things like that, um, any advice on something they get would be awesome. I don't really know how the audio is going to sound, so that would be pretty chill too if you could uh, point me in the right direction for that. So, it looks like this just fits in the back of that be a pretty easy little dry fit there and that makes sense there's a little hole behind his head so we can check six I guess um, I do not remember off the top of my head what color the inside of these things are supposed to be I think they're kind of a great color like that but I'll at least prime it in gray so this shows gray with kind of highlighted stuff and then some other things that's the technical term for it, so I'm just glad. There you go. You can kind of see what they got there. The other weird thing about this sh setup I have going is that the camera is actually upside down to me. So hopefully I can figure out a way to spin it around so it looks okay. Uh, but right now, I, I don't really know how it's going to work. It should be great. It just should be. Uh, let's see. More things down here. I'll reach a pause point and go and prime all this stuff. But I want to make sure I'm doing the right stuff. You know. There's some more of this. These sanders I'm using are the UMP Ultimate Sanders. I think that's what they're called. Uh, this is the 220 grit one. I uh, had it for a while. I actually won it in a, uh, in a live show that those guys put on every now and, or every Friday. And they're great. I fell in love with them. I have never turned back. In fact, I had to the big order the other day just to get more of these. Um, highly recommend it if you don't have any. Um, they're kind of squishy with the, uh, the foam there. And the squishiness will make it like it kind of form around the part, so the rounding looks better than with like these old crappy sanding sticks that uh, Hobby Lobby sells or uh, Michaels for exuberant prices. So, little things are much better. Uh, so, these things need to have the insides primed. Uh, let's think about the best way to do that. So, 
I'm a really big fan of using blue tack on stuff. Now a lot of people don't, but it doesn't, it can leave off residue, but it also, I believe, is a bit more sturdy to hold stuff in place than white tack is. The white tack doesn't tend to leave residue on things, but it can be sticky to itself. Uh, probably didn't make sense to anybody, just, I like the blue stuff. Also, when I first started modeling, I tried to find white tack and I couldn't, and all they had was blue, and so I got blue, and I've kind of stuck with it for a long time, except for a technique I use to do the insides of canopies uh, on stuff, which I may be able to show, but this we will see. Probably not, though. That's like, these are just shish kebab things. Uh, I have model stores that try to sell them for like crazy prices. We can just go to like a food store and get a, you know, a bag of them for like a dollar. And if you're working in, you know, British Royal Pounds, just make sure it's enough for a dollar. Uh, let's see. What comes next? Do this guy. I think this piece is going to be secured inside of something, so I'll have the attach point for that. Be right there. And I'm a really big fan of using these uh, foam blocks. Uh, and you leave the plastic on it so as you stab it and stuff, like all the uh, little fizzy stuff doesn't come out. I know a lot of people use uh, cardboard, the, like core you get inside of, and then you stick the stuff in there. Uh, I've never had enough cardboard to really make one of those, so that is why I don't have one. Uh, let's see, B2, uh, 17 is this guy. It's got some nice uh, molded in detail there. Hopefully that'll autofocus. Uh, I think that thing showed that kind of being brushed, but I'll do that pretty easily. Let's some other stuff later. So, uh, the scheme for this, I'm going to paint it in the kind of original colors that you see, the uh, slightly blue tinted, which was, you know, had to do with how they filmed the movies back then, and then when they color corrected it, everything kind of got a weird blue tint to it, so that's why the Star Destroyers and USB and Rot J like look more blue. Or at least the article I was reading on the internet told me that. Could be completely false, and I'm just spreading lies out there, but... That's what I heard. So I'm going to actually go with a little bit uh, of blue tint to it. Not too much like uh, some of the miniatures for the X-Wing games are. Uh, and I'm also going to paint it like, uh, I believe it's Super Bell is the bro's name. He like had a really cool red stripe on the side of his thing. And he's like, hey man, I'm awesome. I got this red stripe don't mess with me. People are like, yo, bro, you're like a baron. That's awesome. We're not going to screw with you. And then, like, his buddies would just, like, paint their whole thing red. And he was like, really, man? Like, the whole thing? Like, the stripe was my deal. He just went, like, crazy, man. So, gotta look out for that. Don't know who your friends are. Now, let's see. There's some other stuff here. Kind of want to save overall priming for overall stuff and just as things that are going to be going internally to do that. And then choose D4 or G2. And let's see, what does this mean? What does this mean to me, the modeler? So, A2, D4, G2. Um, so, G, here's a G2. Be the one that requires tons of masking and kind of has some burrs on it. That is unfortunate but might be what I have to do. I wish I would look good once it's done. Or D4. So the D sprue. Oh, I think that's this. So this included a black background uh, with no like plasticiness on it. So that might be something I do later. So I'm just going to roll with this uh, 
this black one, and what I'm going to do to back it is I'll just put um, some tomato like tape or something, or even blue tag. Yeah, like a giant thing of blue tag. That would probably work. So what else can I get done if I need to go down and do that other stuff? Well, that's one good thing. So... I need to prime this. Well, that wasn't very long. Uh, <laughs> well, I'm going to go take this stuff downstairs out of the spray booth in another part of the house just because of how it all lives. And I will do that and then let it sit. And then I'll probably play a little bit of that game, the one I like, Diablo 3. I had a buddy get me into it. Run a couple of runes on it, and then, or riffs, I think they're called. Then uh, I'll come back and paint the rest of this, uh, for the interior at least, and then get it all closed up and then move on from there. Uh, yeah. Also, if you have suggestions for a name for the group or channel, let me know. I'd appreciate it. So, take it easy uh, until I get back from being downstairs. Cheers.